Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Let's Talk Movies podcast. I'm your host, Brian Drolet. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys some movie news today, but I also want to talk about the movie that I just saw, Knock at the Cabin. M. Night, Shyamalan's new movie that recently came out uh, starring Dave Bautista, Jonathan Groff, Ben Aldridge, Nikki Amuka Bird, Kristen Kui, Ki, Ku, Q, Kristen. Abby Quinn and more. Look, I have to be honest, guys. I hated this movie, all right? Now, if you haven't uh, seen the movie and you're a fan of M. Night Shyamalan movies, I I want you to know I'm a fan of his movies, and I've liked most of his movies. I've even liked the movies that other people maybe didn't like as much, like The Village, and, um, you know, I like that movie old. Some people didn't love it, but I like his movies. I hated Knock at the Cabin, okay? This is one of those movies that, you know when you get to the end of the movie and, and you're like, you're, you get that first thought in your head, you're like, oh, are, are they about to end this movie here? And you're like, you, you better not end this here. Like, you're not, you're not really going to end this here, are you? And then you're like, oh my God, they are going to end it here. And you're just, you can't believe it. You're like, how dare you make me sit through two hours of this to end here? What? Credits? And that's how I felt at Knock at the Cabin. I, okay, so spoiler alert here, but most M. Night Shyamalan movies have some sort of big twist or big reveal at the end. This movie had no twist, no reveal, no nothing. Just, and, and it's apparently based off a book, so maybe if you've read the book, you wouldn't be as disappointed here as, as I was because you kind of know what to expect and maybe you're just appreciating it on a different level, you know, it being just, it is what it is. So maybe some people might kind of enjoy this movie just because of the straightforward, like, this is, this is what this movie is. People knock at the cabin door and they say, look, the end of the world's coming and you have to kill, uh, sacrifice one of you out of the three to save humanity. That's basically the plot of the movie. Um, I don't even think I'm giving anything away. I think it says that in the, you know, the description of the movie. But, <clears throat> um, yeah, so maybe you'll enjoy it just to kind of go on that ride, but I felt cheated. I felt like with most of his movies, like I wanted there to be some deeper explanation for who these people were, and it just was just, bleh, like, And so, yeah, it really upset me, but I don't know. Have you guys seen it? What did you think at Knock at the Cabin? It currently has a 67% on Rotten Tomato. Man, for me, this movie is a 41% at best, just from my own personal taste. I'm not saying it's a terrible movie. Like, Dave Bautista is really great in it. I really enjoyed his performance. Um, But again, the script, like, I wanted his character and other characters to be saying and doing things that they weren't. And I don't know, the movie just annoyed me. It was one of those movies that just, you're screaming at the movie the whole time. Like, what do you mean? Just leave right now. Go get the gun. Leave. Um, That sort of thing. But I don't know. Uh, Knock at the cabin. I did also uh, recently start watching The Whale. Okay. I love Brendan Fraser. He's great. Man, I, I haven't finished it. I started putting it on very late at night. I want to say I got about 40 minutes in, maybe 35 minutes in, something like that. Uh, it's very depressing and very dark and very depressing. <laughs> it's so depressing. And like the other thing that's a challenge for, for me is it's just so obvious it's Brendan Fraser in a frat, fat suit. And the makeup people, you know, they do a phenomenal job. Like it looks great. But you still just know it's kind of like watching Tom Hanks in the Elvis movie. It's like, all right, what'd you do to his nose? Like, I'm just so always aware of that. So that kind of ruined it a little for me. That just it was just so depressing. I mean, honestly. But having said that, I could see how it could have a very sweet ending. And I don't know, maybe it's just, maybe you've seen it and you're like, no, Brian, it's got a really depressing ending too. I don't know. But I am going to finish it. And I will talk about it. Uh, but so far, Brendan Fraser's amazing. Um, the movie's just really depressing. <laughs> All right, let's get into some movie news. 
Okay, so in Keanu Reeves news, uh, he was recently asked, what do you think about a movie with the crossover of you and Denzel Washington, his character from the Equalizer movies, and was quoted as saying, whoa, that would be really cool and really crazy. So he's giving hope to, you know, who knows, could there be an Equalizer, John Wick crossover movie? It, hey, it could happen. Keanu Reeves also recently paid tribute uh, to his uh, late co-star of Point Break, Patrick Swayze. He said, working with Patrick Swayze, he was a, a total pro, a gentleman, a movie star, and an inspiration. So Lord of the Rings is coming back to movie theaters for its 20-year anniversary, and it's going to be an extended version of the movie. So Lord of the Rings coming back into movie theaters for the 20th reunion extended edition. Uh, Rebel Wilson recently commented on seeing Cats for the first time, the movie she was in. Uh, that was one of the most spectacular Hollywood bombs of all time. Uh, but uh, she apparently the first time she ever saw it, her reaction was, ah, hey, that's good. <laughs> so uh, Steven Spielberg uh, recently had some really cool and really fascinating comments on all the UFO sightings that have apparently been rampant in the US over the last few years. Uh, especially our own military, our gun cameras, the cameras that are on guns and these fighter jets and things are, are recording some things we just can't explain. And he had a really cool take. Well, first of all, he said he does not believe there's any chance we're alone in the universe. He said it's mathematically impossible that we are the only, only intelligent species in all of the cosmos, which I agree with too. I, but he, he had his interesting take was, what if these UFO sightings that we're seeing are not some alien species from 400 light years away? What if it's us in the future coming back to document our past and our history? And maybe they know something that we don't know that we're going to go through and they need to document and kind of figure out in history. So it could be us in the future eavesdropping on us, which is really cool and really fascinating. And everybody's saying, that's a movie right there. And he also says he doesn't think, you know, we're traveling or, or people are traveling from far away. He thinks there's got to be wormholes and ways to go through time and space that are kind of like shortcuts. Uh, all really fascinating stuff I think would make a killer movie. There used to be a TV show called Sliders that I think was kind of like about going through wormholes to different dimensions and in each different dimension a lot would be the same but like small things could be different like green, a green light might mean stop in another dimension and red might mean go, uh, things like that. Um, but really cool, really fascinating stuff. I think Spielberg should make a movie about it. So Ryan Reynolds recently spoke about the possibility of a sequel to his movie Free Guy about artificial intelligence, basically learning its artificial intelligence. I loved Free Guy. I thought it was really cool, really fascinating movie, different, fresh, and of course funny. Uh, so basically what he's saying is they are talking about it. It is a possibility. But then he kind of just goes on to say, does every movie need a sequel? You know, can a movie just live on its own and that's it and everybody go home, so to speak. Uh, but, you know, he also recognizes sometimes, you know, it's, it is fun to do a sequel for a movie people really like. It was a huge hit. Uh, so there might be or there might not be. I guess we'll have to stay tuned to find out if there will be a Free Guy sequel. Uh, so, you know, there's been some drama around the Rocky franchise uh, and the, these Creed movies. Apparently... The producer uh, kind of swindled the rights from these movies from Sylvester Stallone, who's pretty bitter about it. He really wanted to leave this franchise to his children, and he didn't appear in the latest Creed, which, by the way, is crushing it at the box office. And one of the stars of it, Jonathan Majors, he had an amazing week playing the villain in Ant-Man and then also in Creed. Uh, so really cool for him. But uh, the movie's doing really well, but... You know, the elephant in the room is there's no Rocky in it. And again, Sly Stallone has been speaking on this. He, he's got no disrespect to Michael B. Jordan, but feels very offended by the producer who not only apparently somehow swindled the rights to the franchise, but then spread it out to his children. So, and, and 
it's Rocky, I say. S Stallone really wanted to do that with his kids. So there's a big bitterness there. I think Stallone said he would do a Creed movie with Michael B. Jordan only, and only if that other guy isn't involved. So sadly, it doesn't sound like we're going to get Sylvester Stallone back in the Rocky franchise anytime soon or the Creed franchise. And Michael B. Jordan, he did say in an interview recently that, you know, he really wanted to explore the Rocky stuff initially, but then really wanted Creed to stand on his own two feet. And that's why he's not in the movie. That's what he's saying. And that could very well be true. But also, uh, maybe Rocky would have been in it on some level uh, had there not been this drama with um, Stallone and the producer. So I don't know. Um, do you guys think Rocky will appear in any future movies? Will they settle the beef? Or is that it? And, um, you know, unfortunately, one of the film world's most iconic characters will never see him on screen again in that role, which is very sad. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. So uh, kind of cool. The iconic um, characters from the original Scream movie, uh, Jamie Kennedy, Matthew Lillard and Skeet Ulrich uh, were all at a baseball game recently and posed for a photo again, all showing uh, customized game jerseys for the team they were rooting for with their names on it. But kind of cool to see those three back together. Um, you know, very cool, uh, classic movie. And those guys have all went on to have very uh, pretty, pretty awesome careers. So uh, cool to see them back together again. More Keanu Reeves news, guys. Uh, this is pretty cool. It was kind of shocking to me. The role that Keanu Reeves wants to play in the Marvel Universe. Are you ready? My, the first thing that popped in my head was Gambit. Like, he just feels like Gambit. But he wants to play Wolverine, which would be very fascinating. Um, I'm not sure I see him as a Wolverine, but I do think he's a very good actor, and I'm sure he could... He could do it. He's a little long and thin. You know, Wolverine's very short and very stocky. Um, so I don't know, but definitely Gambit. But what do you guys think of Keanu Reeves as Wolverine? Um, I don't know, Keanu, but I love you. But I love you, Keanu. Whoa. Whoa. So Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Seth Rogen's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mutant Mayhem, uh, a teaser, was revealed recently. So I guess this was shown at the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards. But it revealed a star-studded cast, Mika Abbey, Shaman Brown Jr., Nicholas Cantu, and Brady Noon. I have no clue who any of these people are, but apparently they're star-studded, being pr produced by Rogan. Ayo Edebiri will play April. Jackie Chan will be Splinter. Now, finally, somebody I know. Jackie Chan will be Splinter. That should be really cool. Oh, John Cena will be Rocksteady. And Rogan will be Bebop, which is probably perfect, his voice. Oh, nice. And Hannibal Burris, who I love, one of my favorite comedians, is going to play Genghis Frog. So, all right. We really, we shaped it up there in the end, thankfully, with the cast. That, I'm... I'm excited to see this. I'm a big Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fan. Was my whole life. I even still have all the action figures from my childhood. But that's this episode of the Let's Talk Movies podcast. Thanks for watching, guys. Tune back next time. Make sure you subscribe to the Up On Game Network. I'm your host, Brian Drolet. Until next time.